Hey guys, in this video series I'm going to talk about um, freestyling your build, which means not following a specific build and just kind of winging it as you go. That's what I do most of my games, honestly, and in order to be able to do that, you have to kind of know what legitimate builds are, and you have to understand um, how much resources different things cost to make sure that you're harvesting enough gas and minerals and using up enough of your gas and minerals. And um, the important thing to do is to make sure that whatever the next stage of your build is going to be, it's going to be a good reaction to your opponent. Um, that's why generally if you're going to do something like um, a Zealot rush early on, you'd follow it up with Stargate units because anything that does well against Zealots, um, well, like for an example, Banelings wouldn't do as well against Stargate units. That might not have been the best example, but the point is just that you want to kind of organize your build like a one-two punch so that when your opponent counters the first stage of your build, um, whatever you do in the second stage of your build counters whatever they did to counter you. And by doing that on the fly, you can uh, keep your, your opponent confused and keep them off balance. And that's generally what you want to do is keep them confused and off balance, um, as well as just out micro them in general. I thought this game was kind of an interesting one because um, the first thing that I did was... Uh, in the Zerg versus Zerg, was I kind of Zergling rushed him a little bit, and then I just used the rest of my Zerglings as defense, and he thought that I was going to use them to attack him, so he wasted a lot of money on static defense. And the point of that is, even if you invest a lot of resources in something, like for example Zerglings, and then you don't use them appropriately, it's, I didn't use them appropriately because I could have just made drones if I wasn't going to attack. But the point is, it was still fine because it made him react in a way that also put him behind. So another example of that would be like if you battle cruiser cheese someone and you're not able to do any damage with it, but as long as you force them, like for example, to build a lot of anti-air turrets and your worker count ends up being the same, you're still fine. So what I'm trying to say is it's okay to play aggressively and not do any damage as long as you uh, throw your opponent enough off balance that you still can continue the game onwards from there. So that's one point I wanted to make. Another thing I want, another thing I wanted to point out is that. When you're in um, different phases of the game, um, different things are stronger or weaker. Like, for example, in the early game, uh, Terran proxies can be really effective, but late game they don't really do much because there's no point in proxying. Um, queens are really strong um, military units early game, so you can keep yourself safe as Zerg by abusing queens in the early game and then drawing up a lot behind it. Um, shield batteries and photon cannons are very strong for Protoss early game. Basically, static defense in general. Um, is strong early game, but also um, units in general, including static defense, are a lot more expensive early game because you don't have a high worker count early game. So whatever you invest into other than workers uh, can set you back a lot more in the early game. So in a roundabout way, uh, building workers early on and building expansions early on is overpowered economically, but building combat units early on is overpowered economically as well. I mean, militarily. Um, what I'm trying to get at is you have to understand that in different phases of the games, um, things have more or less relative value. It's okay to throw away units in the late game if a distraction confuses your opponent, whereas if you throw away units in the early game, that might just make you outright lose. Um, in this particular game that we're watching, um, what I want to kind of point out is that a couple different things. So here, when he killed those drones, I didn't care. Um, the reason why is because I was macroing my minerals so badly at that point anyway that I could just... And I had enough larvae, I could rebuild those drones for free. So although that's a mistake on my part to be macroing so badly, it also gives you an example of when losing units doesn't really have much consequence. Um, there wasn't really much consequence to it because it didn't make it really any harder for me to win the game due to losing those drones. I can rebuild them very easily. Um, he's still continuing to kill my mineral drones, which is absolutely the worst thing he could be doing. Um, if he's going to kill anything, he should kill my gas drones to cut off my gas supply so I can't make mutas. I'm killing overlords. Uh, would work if I had less of them because it would supply block me. But because I have plenty of overlords, that's not doing much other than reducing my map vision a little. But here, because he was um, had his mutalisks in vision, I was able to kill some of them. I'm going to slow this down a little more so you can see the micro. So the important thing that he should have done here is he should have had his Corruptors tank the damage and kept his Mutalisks from dying. Corruptors are very tanky air units, but their damage per second isn't that high against Mutalisks. So what I'm deliberately doing is trying to get his Mutas cut off from his Corruptors so that I can kill the Mutas. Once I kill the Mutas, he won't have anything that can shoot Zerglings, and then I can start flooding him with Zerglings as well. So as you can see, I go for the Mutas. 
I kill the muters and then I run away. Basically what I want to do is, is uh, make it so that he doesn't have um, anything that can shoot ground with his air units. That way I can harass him with Zerglings pretty easily without being punished. And I'm going to keep massing up um, Mutalisks and use the fact that they fly faster than Corruptors to frustrate him. Um, I'm also getting upgrades from my Mutalisks because I'm planning on continuing to mass air units. So upgrades make Mutalisks a lot more effective. Um, they're not very strong at all with no upgrades. Some people just use them to do a little bit of economic damage and then switch out. But I like to uh, just upgrade my Mutalisks and keep playing with them because Mutalisks are a very abusable unit. One of the ways that you can abuse them is just hold position them in whatever corner the enemy's mineral line doesn't have static defense. And then even if they do have static defense, your units will just be parked somewhere shooting where uh, static defense can't hit them. Um, some of the things that make Mutalisks hard to use is uh, when Terran makes Thors or Widow Mines, that makes it hard. Um, Protoss doesn't really have any strong counters to them other than massing Phoenixes, but if they commit to massing Phoenixes, that's usually uh, leaves them with other weaknesses. You can see I'm just wandering around the map with my Mutalisks, finding things that aren't defended and attacking them. I've also got Zerglings swarming at his different bases. Um, as far as Zerg versus Zerg goes, it's usually either a uh, two base Mutalisk or Roach Mass or Zergling Baneling fights. I try to avoid the Zergling Baneling fights because I just find them stressful and annoying. With one misclick, you can lose the whole game. Um, I just find the Roach fights boring because both players just make a big blob of units and try to kill each other. Um, and I usually end up getting the timing wrong because Zerg is my worst race in terms of macro at least. So I usually miss macro and end up losing the Roach fights. So for me, Zerg versus Zerg usually means just playing with Mutalisks. I'm very comfortable using Mutalisks because as a pro person who usually plays Protoss or Terran, I like microwing air units. And I don't really like microwing Zerg ground units. It doesn't feel right to me because I don't do it very often. So in most of my games, you'll see me going uh, two base Mutalisk and Zerg versus Zerg. That's just the way I prefer to handle it. Um, there are ways you can counter two base Mutalisk. I had someone do two base Mutalisk to me once, and I just kind of made Zerglings early on, and I killed the wall off at the front of his base and started killing his workers with drones before his Mutalisks popped out. That's one of the ways that you can counter two base Mutalisk. Another thing you can do is get good creep spread and get your Hydralisks, a big blob of Hydralisks, and just make sure that you... Uh, are able to um, not get your Hydralisks split up too much so that enemy Mutalisks can't kill them. It's really good to kill Queens anytime you're fighting Zerg because Queens cut down on their larva production. I wanted to kill his spawning pool because that would cut off his Zergling and his Queen production and then he wouldn't be able to rebuild the Queens I killed, but he has too many Corruptors chasing me. This was kind of a bad flight path. I should have flown out like this way instead. I didn't realize he had so many uh, spores there, so that was a bad way to fly. I took more losses than I need to. You might be wondering what I'm going to do because uh, he's got more bases than me and uh, his Corruptors seem like they kind of counter my Mutalisks. But actually, um, because his Corruptors can't catch my Mutalisks, they don't counter them that well. So I'm just going to keep upgrading my Mutalisks and keep massing more of them. Um, if he tries to just counter me with Corruptors, I can just run in circles and keep killing random things. Here I can bring in my queens for support if I need to. He did get one of my queens there, so that was good on his part. Um, at this point, I should probably be expanding, because I've got enough Mutalisks and queens to defend my bases. I should expand here. Um, I just don't have enough APM to do everything I need to be doing, though. I'm too slow and old, so I'm just uh, making Zerglings right now, and I'm going to get ready to attack again. If I had more APM to spare, I'd be building more bases, too, but I just don't see it as a priority right now. Because my priority is to cut down on his drone count because he's got more bases than me. I don't want him to get too far ahead of me, economically speaking. I've got an army that's well suited to doing hit and run attacks, so I want to do as many attacks as possible. Again, even when I was playing this game, I knew I should be expanding. I just didn't feel like I had the time to do it. Now here his units are split up a bit too much and my upgrades are better. That's why I'm taking this fight. I ran away because I saw more of his units coming in and I didn't want to lose too many Mutalisks. Mutalisks are a unit that's expensive to replace. You want to avoid throwing them away needlessly. You only want to take advantage of trades and don't lose your critical mass of them. See, what I'm trying to do is fight against his Corruptors and his Hydralisks by splitting them up. Because if I split up his Corruptors from his Hydralisks, then I'm only fighting 
about half his strength at once. I was talking earlier about um, things that are overpowered in the early game um, and things that are good in the early game. Um, but one of the things that's really good in the mid game is air units. And this is kind of, this game is kind of an example of why it's very hard for an opponent to handle a mass of air units unless they have the right things to counter it. Like here he goes chasing me and his units got split up, so I was able to fight them split up. Um, the next game I'll show you can show you an example of how abusive Protoss air units can be, since I've shown you an example of Zerg air units. But once they fly over the cliff walls, they get split up, and then that's when you can take engagements. At some point, I should bring in reinforcements. Oh, I did finally get that next base going. I've got more mutalisks down here. I just didn't have time to add them to the group. Part of the reason why I end up winning this game is because my upgrades become better than his. I've got one and two on my attack upgrades. Whereas his units are barely upgraded at all. That's one of the things that will usually decide a game um, is upgrade timings. Again, his units got split up, so even though his units technically counter mine because they're more split up, although he has too many Hydralisks here, and I realized that eventually and back off, I think. Yeah. That, that was kind of a bad fight there. I lost more Mutalisks than I should have. The initial part of the fight was good when his units were split up and I was killing them, but then when I continued the fight against the large group of Hydralisks, it became bad. So the first phase of that fight was good, the second phase was a mistake. This is a really bad fight. I think I stopped looking here. Yeah, I was. I must have been watching something else. I was probably watching my base or my army because that was a really bad fight there. I lost a lot of Mutalisks for no reason. That was a good trade. That was three Hydralisks for one Mutalisk. Again, Hydralisks don't do very well against Zerglings, so that's part of the reason why it's hard for him to counter my air units with uh, Hydralisks, because he ends up not having enough Larva to make what he needs to counter my Zerglings. I always have the the Hyd I always focus the Hydralisks because they're glass cannons, and I just let the Zerglings attack move. Zerglings are disposable units, so it's okay to attack, attack move them if you have other stuff to do, but your, hydral your uh, Mutalisks almost always need to be microed. Uh, Mutalisks are expensive tech air, unit, air units. You have to control them carefully. Zerglings are more like throwaway units. It's important to know which units you can throw away and which ones you have to babysit. Generally, units that are cheap and easily massable can be thrown away in the late game, but you don't want to just throw away your expensive units that cost a lot of gas. At this point, the game is basically over. Um, he hasn't realized it yet, but he's just been letting himself take too many bad trades against my Mutalisks, and now he's getting behind in terms of army and sp and yeah, his supply is way down. You know, his economy is way down. He keeps making more static defense, but static defense you can just run around it and attack it at whatever angle you want. So it's it has some utility in terms of saving you time. If you have more static defense, you don't have to react as quickly to defend a base. But Static defense by itself is not really a counter to harassment. It just makes you have more time to do other things while you're being harassed. I can still slowly take him apart bit by bit, even if he has a lot of static defense. And here, there's just not enough static defense to handle the critical mass of mutas. He's going to GG soon, I think. Yeah. That's one example of air units being overpowered. I'm going to move on to the Protoss replay now. In this replay, I'll give you an example of Protoss um, air units being overpowered in the mid game. Um, what I'm trying to do in these replays is show you guys ways um, that as a diamond level player, you can win games easier. I'm not trying to teach you how to be really good at the game. Um, I'm just trying to teach you some ways to make the game easier on you if you're like an average player of the game like I am. 
Um, so far, nothing crazy has happened. I'm just building a, a little gateway to uh, trickle some units at my opponent to kind of fluster him. And I'm going to expand quickly behind it. Um, if you don't wall off against Zerg as any race, then you always run the constant risk of having Zerglings flooded into your base. So, in my opinion, it's usually worthwhile to wall off against Zerg. You just don't want to give them those easy opportunities to uh, spam Zerglings into your base. A lot of my losses against Zerg just come from me being forgetful or too lazy or for whatever reason I don't wall off and then because of that they end up easily getting Zerglings into my base. And I often lose for that. A small group of Zerglings like this isn't that scary if your opponent's micro isn't very good though because usually you can just deal with them with workers. <clears throat> Still getting a couple of kills but no, no big deal. I'm attacking his queens with zealots. <clears throat> so this is a pretty good position for me. Um, I've got two bases up and most of my wall off is finished. I've got zealots giving him a pain in the butt to fluster him. Our worker counts are pretty comparable. So as a Protoss player playing against the Zerg player, this is a pretty good position to be in. I noticed that drone going down there, so I'm going to follow it. Getting my gas harvesting started behind this harassment because my plan is to mass air units. I'm just kind of putting a little bit of pressure on him with my zealots before I mass air units. And usually, this is what you want to do as any race. You notice how in the Zerg race before, in the Zerg game before, I attacked with Zerglings first before I transitioned into mutas. In this game, I'm attacking with zealots before transitioning into air units. You always want to uh, put on some pressure and establish your economy in the early game, and then you transition into massing air units. And then you take advantage of your mass of air units and uh, the geography of the map to annoy the heck out of your opponent. And you gradually build up your economy behind that until you can um, finish them off. If you can't finish them off only with air units, um, a good transition for Zerg would be to get upgraded Zerglings or Ultralisks to finish them off. Good transition for uh, Ter for Terran if you're harassing them with air units is just to get a lot of upgraded marines. Upgraded marines and marauders beat a lot of things. A good transition for Protoss is to get Colossus behind your harassment. Colossus usually do pretty well against most things that can handle mass air. Unless your opponent is also massing air, but if your opponent is also massing air, it's often best just to get an upgrade lead and keep um, massing air yourself. Like I did in that game against the Zerg, he went air against me, I kept getting upgrades, and I kept massing air. So here he tried to punish me with a Zergling attack, and I just made more buildings to wall off, so that was fine. If I hadn't walled off like that, I would have just lost the game here. Uh, I have lost plenty of games where I just don't wall off properly. The opponent sends Zerglings, they get through, they do a lot of economic damage, and I just lose. But because he wasn't able to get through, you can see his worker count really suffered from the fact that he made so many lings, so that put me ahead. So I'm already ahead. I'm not sure why he's laughing at Double Stargate. Double Stargate is perfectly good in Diamond Elo. It might not be that strong in Master's Elo, but it's it's good in Diamond Elo, and both me and him are Diamond players, so... Again, I think my game knowledge is probably still high master level. I just, I'm really slow compared to what I used to be, so I, I don't have the speed or the macro to compete in uh, high level play anymore, but I still understand enough of the theory to know what's good in what league. But he's supply blocked right now. Killing more of his overlords to supply block him further. He has too many queens for me to be able to do damage on this side. So I'm going to look across the map to find overlords to kill. And my basically plan is just to build up a critical mass of Stargate units. And at some point I'll start making Colossus behind it, just in case he gets enough Hydralisks to uh, defeat my air mass. Now there's a couple different ways you can mass air units. Mass carriers isn't that good, in my opinion, because it takes too long to get a mass of them, and by then, by then your opponent has enough time to come up with counters. Um, but mass void rays is pretty good because they can snipe buildings really well. Mass Phoenix is pretty good because they can snipe units really well. But you usually only want to do one or the other because it's kind of hard to do a mix of both and still micro effectively. So this game I'm going for a Mass Void Rays. I do Mass Phoenix sometimes. 
if I had mass phoenix, I'd be picking up drones, and then when they get isolated, I would pick up queens, and when hydralisks pop out, I would pick them up one by one as they pop out with my phoenixes. But for void rays, I just kind of look for a weak spot and snipe some buildings, look for a weak spot and snipe some buildings, and just keep doing that over and over. Snipe overlords too if you can. Uh, here I'm building up robos and more gateways. The gateways are to make zealots, which are to use up my extra minerals, because my air units are gas heavy and so are colossus. Um, the Colossus are going to be to counter whatever ground units he makes to counter my Void Rays. So I took out a Hatchery there. It's pretty easy when you have a lot of Void Rays to knock off buildings. I'm getting one attack upgrade, and then I'm going to go for the Warp Gate so that I can warp in more Zealots. This game ended up being a much easier win than I thought it was going to be. My initial impression of this guy was that I thought he was going to be a decent player because he was, like, talking smack and stuff, but... Turns out he actually wasn't any good. Um, his main problem right now is that his economy is really weak. He's got only 41 drones against my uh, 50 probes. So he's really behind economically. And the game's pretty much going to end here. Um, I'll just snipe those hydralisks so they come out, kill the hydralisk den. And then I just decide to go ahead and nuke his main base, and he gives up after that. And that's that. So if you guys haven't been following um, the point of these videos, I'm not sure if I'm communicating very uh, clearly or not. But basically what I'm trying to get at is basically cheesy, unpredictable tactics in the early game are overpowered. They give you a good chance of winning. But you don't want to rely entirely on cheesy overpowered on cheesy rushes. You want to make sure that your economic foundation behind them is still stable, so that if your cheese gets held off, you can continue to the next phase of the game. There are people who will be able to hold off your cheesy early game rushes, and you don't want to rely totally on them because you want to have a more broad, uh, more options of winning than just winning in the early game. I'm trying to go over. Um, strong mid-game strategies which mostly revolve around air units or timing attacks with upgrades. Um, getting an upgrade lead will make your ground units um, devastate the enemy's ground units and we'll see that in this game. This is going to be to, going to be a game where I try to go for um, the air units in the mid-game and it doesn't work out so then I just switch over to making upgrades instead and I win because of an upgrade advantage. I think the two easiest ways to win if you don't win in the early game by cheesing is to win by having an upgrade advantage or to win by using air units to pick your opponent apart. Um, in the late game, if it gets to the late game, you pretty much have to win by having better area of effect damage or just better APM than the opponent. If you out multitask them in the late game, um, you can win that way. That's why building static defense and um, building a lot of production in the late game is good because static defense makes it so you don't have to devote as much time looking at your bases because static defense can handle some of it for you. Um, having a lot of production means you can trade armies and rebuild more quickly. Um, and having area of effect damage like, for example, uh, Colossus or Psy Storm or Widow Mines or Ravens, anything that does splash damage just helps in the mass versus mass fights when you have big blobs of armies fighting against each other. So if you're going to go for the late game, um, building a lot of production, a lot of workers, a lot of static defense, and a lot of units that do splash damage is a must. But I don't really enjoy um, the late game as much as the mid game. I find that the late game, I just get frustrated because there's so much to do and I don't have enough APM to handle it all. So it just feels like everything's constantly falling apart. So I prefer to try to win in the, mi in the mid game. And for winning in the mid game, you either want an upgrade advantage timing attack or you want to try to win with air units. So that's what a lot of my replays would showcase. Um, this Banshee, I just kind of put it over here to annoy him, and then I warped in with this uh, battle cruiser, which he was ready for it. He got Corruptors out, and it died without doing any damage, really. However, if you look at the units, <clears throat> right now I've got more workers than he does, because he had to waste a lot of workers on building static defense, and he hasn't had time to drone up because he was so focused on holding off my attack. So what I'm getting at is, even though um, that battle cruiser was a huge waste of money, I'm still not in a bad position just because he was so flustered by my various attacks that he wasn't able to keep up econom economically. He's preventing me from taking a third base, and he has four bases up. 
So in theory, this is not bad for him. However, he has no upgrades started yet, and my upgrades are about half done already. It's hard for him to break through here because I've got plenty of SCVs to heal, although really he could have killed that battlecruiser, and he should have. Um, he got scared of the turret for no reason. He should have finished the battlecruiser when he had the chance. If he had finished the battlecruiser, he still probably wouldn't have been able to break through, though, because I've got a um, decent number of bio behind this, more widow mines, and my upgrades are finishing. So in this game, because the air units didn't work out, I just transitioned into winning with an upgrade lead. I'm using Widow Mines as just like static defense to make um, my defense a little bit stronger. <clears throat> now, at this point in the game, if he had started his upgrades, he still would have had a chance to win. Um, I think he was just so busy um, trying to do damage to me with his attacks and so busy trying to keep his economy going that he just kind of forgot about upgrades in the process. So this Widow Mine never shoots, and because of that, um, the Banelings all managed to kill my base. In order to prevent that, I should have selected this Widow Mine and manually targeted one of the Banelings in the back. Because I didn't do that, every Widow, every Baneling this middle Widow Mine was targeting was dying to my Marines, and so it never man ended up shooting. And because it didn't shoot, it didn't kill the cluster of Banelings, and so this died. So all of that was a micro mistake. I should have just taken this Widow Mine and told it to attack one of the Banelings in the back that wouldn't have died to Marines, and then I would have this base would have stayed up. And the game would have pretty much been over um, because um, I've got an upgrade lead. And so if I had three bases established, I would have just been in a really good position. But because of that micro mistake, I lost that base. And now I kind of have to claw myself out of a hole, which isn't going to be that hard because I've got 2-2 two, two upgrades now and his units are still 1-1. One, one. So my bio is just trading really effectively against his land units. His land units <coughs> have no upgrades and mine are at 2-2. Two, two. So it's just really hard for him to do anything against my units. Um, his Zerglings barely even counter my Marauders. They take so little damage because the Zerglings have no attack upgrades, and the Marauders have plenty of armor upgrades. So from this point onward, um, there's not much he can do. It's kind of too late for him to get his upgrades. He finally finished his Evolution Chambers, but they're too late. And so my upgraded bio will just be able to kill him. So this, the rest of this replay is basically just an example of if you just hang in there and get an upgrade lead over your opponent, then even in a game where you're really far behind, um, you can still end up winning. And that's why frustrating and distracting your opponent with air units can lead to a win, even if he counters your air units successfully. Because if you distract him enough that you get the upgrade lead, you still win. And that's pretty much the story of this game. <clears throat> I distracted him and threw him off balance with my air attacks, and then I secu secured an upgrade lead. Even though I mismicroed and lost my third base, it doesn't matter because the upgraded bio is so strong it can easily slaughter the unupgraded uh, Zerg units. I mean, 2-2 two -two Marines um, basically counter unupgraded Banelings because they do so much damage. And this guy's going to surrender in a little bit. Yeah, I faced him twice in one day, so I don't think he was too happy to keep playing against me. This game's uh, another example of Mutalisks against Protoss this time instead of against Zerg. Um, as Zerg, generally I prefer to use Mutalisks against both Protoss and Zerg. In my opinion, neither of those races have very good counters to them, at least not at the Diamond level. At Master level, games are a little bit different because with sharp timing attacks, you can punish, punish Mutalisks very hard, and you'll often die if you try to go Mutalisks at the wrong time in a Master level game, but... It's not quite the same level of difficulty to play Mutalisks in a Diamond level game. Um, so I go Mutalisks a lot. Against Terran, um, there are strong counters to them that don't require much skill, like Widow Mines or Thor, so I don't like playing Mutalisks against Terran. Against Terran, I would probably just get the Overlord ability to drop units, and I would drop Zerglings inside their base, and then I'd continue upgrading my Zerglings and get uh, Ultralisks eventually for the attack move win. So one thing that I like to do is I like to start my games with uh, three hatcheries, but then rather than droning up really hard, I just saturate um, two bases, leave the third one kind of unsaturated, and make a ton of Zerglings. And the reason for that is if they see you go three bases early, they may try to punish you, but if you are already ready for their punishment by making a good number of Zerglings, then you can hold it off and not take much damage. 
and then that will put you ahead. If they try to react to your three bases by making an early third base themselves, then you can use all those zerglings that you just made to punish them. So I like this opening where I start with three early hatches and make zerglings before I saturate the third. And as you can see, like he did scout me with a adept and tried to do a little bit of damage, and then he made his own third base, and now I'm sending all these zerglings that I made to see what kind of damage I can do. I'm trying to just break through here, which is the wrong move. I should have scouted to see if he had a third base right away. So that's what I end up doing eventually, but I should have done it right away. Again, this is a kind of a mistake by me. I should have put more effort into attacking the third base, but it's not too bad. I still get this round and manage to kill a good number of his units. I still put some pressure on him, um, but overall he comes out ahead in this exchange. I should have killed the third base instead of pressuring the, the main. So in terms of like macro play, he kind of outplayed me here. He's got a worker lead right now, um, three base Protoss against, um, against three base Zerg is good for the Protoss. Um, but his lead is starting to uh, diminish a little bit as I saturate my third base. I'm harvesting a ton of gas and I'm getting the Mutalisk Spire up. So right now he's ahead. He's got um, Oracles coming to, to damage me further with his air unit harass. Basically, he's playing this pretty well. I was able to do a Zergling counterattack and do a little bit of damage there. He's got some economic damage on me there. I had my Queen's position to fight off the Oracles there, so I didn't take too much damage. But all in all, he's ahead, of, he's ahead of me economically. His build is good. Um, what it's going to come down to is just the fact that he's never really experienced playing against Mass Mutalisk as a Protoss player before, I would guess, because his response to it is a little bit awkward. Um, so I was able to pick off some oracles with my first round of Mutalisks. Playing with Mutalisks is all about chipping away at the weak points. Um, this counts as a weak point because that's not enough stalkers to kill this many Mutalisks, so I can go ahead and take that fight. I think he just didn't realize that it takes more stalkers than that to kill Mutalisks. I think that was his main mistake. Everything that happens after this is just him being really flustered and, and not quite knowing what to do. If he had just um, waited a little bit longer before engaging me there, he probably would have been fine. <clears throat> when you're playing against Mutalisks, one small mistake by either player can pretty much decide the game. Um, he would have had enough stalkers to just kind of push in and probably do some serious threatening to me if he hadn't made that mistake. Um, as it is, his macro is kind of all over the place because he had to pull away so many probes. Um, he's trying to mix in phoenixes along with his stalkers, which uh, is not such a good idea because phoenixes and stalkers tend to get separated from each other with diamond level micro, which means they'll just get picked off. Um, if he was more intelligent and told his phoenixes to just follow his stalkers, that might work a little better because that way they wouldn't get separated. But... So again, generally what I'll do is I'll just tell the Zerglings to do a sub something, and then I'll leave them be, and then I'll put more control into my Mutalisks. The Zerglings do pretty well without being micro. The Mutalisks have to be babysitted. Once all my Zerglings are dead, I'm backing up, because I can easily bring in more Zerglings to tank damage and confuse him, but I don't want to lose these precious Mutalisks. I need to keep a critical mass of them. You saw how I let my Zerglings just do their thing and then die, and then... I more carefully preserve the lives of my Mutalisks after folks firing with them. That's kind of how you want to do it. Your Zerglings are throwaway units that you use to tank the damage of units like Stalkers or Hydralisks. And then your Mutalisks are your focused units. <clears throat> it's important to micro correctly like I'm describing when you try these strategies because if you, if you don't, you won't get the same results. I just got my plus one damage on my Mutalisks. I'm continuing to upgrade them. Now that, now that I've reconstituted my Zerglings, I'm going to go ahead and attack him a second time. I'll just do the same thing. I'll let the Zerglings do their thing, and then my Mutalisks will uh, be more focused. So the Zerglings are going to go ahead and just kind of attack, move in there. And then I'm focus firing with my uh, Mutalisks. Again, pure Stalkers against Zergling uh, Muta is really bad for the Stalkers. Stalkers get hard countered by Lings. 
This is not enough Phoenix to deal with this many mutas. Again, I can just kind of run forward and shoot them a little bit and then go back to shooting other things. Meanwhile, the Zerglings are doing huge amounts of damage while he tries to micro the Phoenix. So basically this guy just made some micro and positioning mistakes in his fights. His build was better than mine and his decision making was okay in terms of what he made. It's just his control and positioning of it was what, what didn't work out so well. It's down to 13 workers, the game's over. It's gonna GG soon. Here's an example of a Zerg versus Zerg game where I didn't go Mutalisk. I just kind of did the opener that I like to do where I go for three hatches and then make a large number of lings. Um, you saw how that worked out against uh, the Protoss in the previous game. On um, this game, I'm using it against a Zerg player. So I think he knew that I went three base, so he decided to go for some Roach pressure. He's getting his upgrades up, so that's good. Um, he actually starts upgrades out of these, but looks like he doesn't have time to start upgrades because the lings that I made, remember I don't saturate the third base, I just make lings and I try to do some damage. I end up killing a good number of drones, but he's actually still ahead of me in drones right now, even though he's on two bases, because I didn't saturate this base, I just kind of made lings off of. Now I'm going for the mutalisks, and I'm continuing to make zerglings, um, just to kind of either pressure him or be defensive. I'm pretty sure that I can kill him with Mutalisks off three bases as long as he doesn't kill me. But I've just got my queens and my lings here waiting for his counterattack while I drone up a little bit. And I get this round here and the, with his lings. The lings can do their own thing and then I focus fire with the queens. And that holds his counterattack and I didn't even have to go Mutalisk this game, I just won before. So that's an example of how the going three hatches and then uh, building zerglings rather than saturating the third tends to work pretty well in this elo because people don't expect you to necessarily do that or even if they do expect you to do it it puts you in a good position to handle whatever they chose to do um, what would have been hard for me is if he had made banelings this game but even if he had made banelings i could have just made evolution chambers to wall off the front of this base i could have let that base die and transitioned into mutalisk and then still continue the game from there. So it puts you in, still puts you in a good position, regardless of what your opponent does, or at least a playable position. Here's one more example of building air units in the mid game. Um, I think there's a lot of examples of how massing air with Terran could be strong, like mass banshees with speed, or uh, using widow mines in combination with either Vikings or battle cruisers. Um, there's a lot of different ways you can play it with Terran, but I didn't include one of those in this game because in this replay pack because I didn't happen to have a game of Terran that I thought was really good in that regard. But <clears throat> so again, against Zerg, you always want to get a wall off started in front of your second base just to make sure they can't flood Zerglings at you too easily. You can go ahead and put a little bit of pressure on them with building a gateway unit early on. You can at least figure out what they're up to, even if you don't do any damage, fluster them a little bit. This cell gets in there, I see the zerglings, I start running away because that's too many zerglings. I changed my mind and tried to send the zealot to save the other one, but that was a mistake. I'm gonna end up losing both zealots because of that. I should have just uh I should have kept the second zealot back. So that was a, a fairly sizable mistake, and I realized, oh crap, if he just rushes me with the rest of his lings, he can kill me. So I start building a wall. If he had ran Zerglings into my base, like a large number of them, that would have been it for me. But he didn't, so the game goes on. Start making the Stargates. Well, I actually went for three Stargate this time. That was probably a little bit excessive, but I think I felt worried. <clears throat> I 
I'm not sure why I made three. Three is kind of excessive. Two probably would have been fine. Oh, I think I made three because I wanted to get three um, oracles out quickly, because you need three oracles to really effectively kill a queen, and I wanted to start killing his queens in order to keep his circling count down. So that's why I made three stargates. Um, it wasn't because I really needed three for the long run, I just wanted to get three oracles out as fast as possible. So these oracles are going to look for a queen to kill, I think. Yep, they found a queen to kill. I'm going to buzz off after that. Now I'm starting to switch over to the Void Rays. I think I just made one Phoenix so I could lift the Queen. But mostly it's going to be Void Rays, yeah. So the big mistake this guy's making against playing against me is as soon as he saw the, um, as soon as he saw the Oracles, or as soon as he scouted the Stargates, he should have made, been making a lot of Queens to counter. I think it's because he didn't have enough overlords at first, that's why he wasn't making queens. But at this point it's going to be too late. Um, just because he didn't start making queens soon enough, my critical mass of air units is just going to overwhelm him. I'm making pylons out here so that I can warp in a lot of zealots with my gateways. And I'm just going for the kill. The reason why I decided to go for the kill is because he made four bases. And I just thought, hey, if he's being that greedy, I'll just try to kill him. Plus, I noticed his queen count was low. I noticed he hadn't made too many before, and I'd already picked off one of them with my oracles. So I figured if he doesn't have that many queens and he's being greedy, I can just kill him. That's why I'm coming in with all my air units and my zealots and just trying to kill him. And once these queens die, he realizes he's out of luck, so he, he calls it a GG. So these replays were all just kind of showing you how early game cheese is useful, even if it doesn't... Um, do a lot of damage or kill the opponent. It can fluster them or put them off guard. Um, in the mid game, air units or upgrade timing attack. Either way, getting more upgrades than your opponent or just getting a lot of air units is a good way to kill them. So I hope that was helpful and interesting. And if not, let me know in the comments what you think could have been better. Thanks.